Welcome back to the Tudor's Dynasty podcast. I'm your host, Rebecca Larson. Today, I'm going to take you on a journey through time to explore the fascinating life of one historical figure. This episode, we delve into the world of a monarch whose reign marked the beginning of a new era in English history. Join me as we unravel the life of the inspiring King Henry VII of England. The Tudor's Dynasty Podcast. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer. So no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's all totally free with no catch. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Let's set the stage and rewind to late 15th century, a time of political turmoil and conspiracy. England, recovering from the Wars of the Roses, was a country in mourning and yearning for stability. It was Henry Tudor, future Henry VII, who would change the course of history. Born on the 28th of January, 1457, in Pembroke Castle, Henry Tudor faced numerous challenges from the start. His claim to the throne was through his mother, Margaret Beaufort, a descendant of the Lancastrian line. Growing up in the midst of the Wars of the Roses, Henry's early years were marred with fear and tragedy. This life gave him a unique perspective on life and love. Fast forward to the year 1485, a pivotal moment in English history. The Battle of Bosworth saw Henry Tudor on the battlefield fighting against the Yorkist king, Richard III. Against all odds, with the help of loyal men and paid mercenaries, Henry Tudor emerged victorious, claiming the crown of England and becoming Henry VII. Henry VII wasted no time in implementing policies aimed at unifying the realm. His marriage to Elizabeth of York, a union symbolizing the end of the Wars of the Roses, solidified his claim to the throne. As the daughter of the late King Edward IV, Elizabeth brought to the marriage a legitimacy that Henry did not have on his own. The royal couple's union was blessed with four surviving children, the eldest, Arthur was born less than a year after their marriage. Arthur was destined for greatness. His marriage to Catherine of Aragon was intended to create a formidable alliance with Spain. Though Arthur's life was prematurely cut short at the age of 15, it was his widow, Catherine, who helped his brother, Henry, set the stage to make a significant mark on history. The eldest daughter, Margaret, was born to form alliances. She was promised by her father, Henry VII, to the King of Scotland, James IV, in accordance with the Treaty of Perpetual Peace. Margaret became Queen of Scotland and through her marriage to James IV, gave birth to an heir, James V. You might recognize him as the father of Mary, Queen of Scots. You might also recognize the name Margaret Douglas, Margaret Douglas was Margaret's daughter by Archibald Douglas, Earl of Angus. It was Margaret Douglas's son, Henry, Lord Darnley, who later wed Mary, Queen of Scots. Yes, they were first cousins. The second son of the royal couple was none other than the infamous Henry VIII, the man who married six times and had two wives executed. He was the son charged with continuing the Tudor dynasty for his father and future generations. It was the pressure to produce an heir that led Henry to numerous marriages and a split from Rome, in turn creating the Church of England with him as the head. But before he died, Henry VIII left behind two daughters and a son. It was those three children who carried on the reign for another 58 years after his death. Lastly, a daughter named Mary. Mary, like her elder sister Margaret, was destined to marry a king. In 1514, Mary sailed to France to wed King Louis XII. 
Their marriage was short-lived, and Mary secretly wed her brother's best friend, Charles Brandon, Duke of Suffolk. Mary and Charles only had daughters who survived to adulthood, but it was their granddaughters, the ladies Jane, Catherine, and Mary Gray, who made history in their own rights. These children of Henry VII and Elizabeth of York left their mark on history after his death, but how is his reign remembered? As king, Henry VII's reign was marked by fiscal responsibility and administrative reforms. His astute management of finances helped replenish the royal treasury, providing a solid foundation for the Tudor dynasty. He established the Court of Star Chamber, a legal institution that enhanced the king's power and ensured justice. However, the road to success was not without its challenges. Henry faced rebellions and conspiracies, including the Lambert Simnel and Perkin Warbeck rebellions. These threats tested the king's resolve and political acumen. In addition to the loss of his son, Arthur, prematurely, a year later, his wife, Elizabeth, died from childbirth. King Henry VII died in his bed in April 1509, paving the way for the reign of his son to become King Henry VIII. Today, we've explored the life of a monarch whose legacy endures in the pages of history. King Henry VII's reign laid the groundwork for the Tudor dynasty shaping England's destiny for generations to come. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this, please click the subscribe button. It's completely free to subscribe and you'll be notified when new episodes are available. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Tudor's Dynasty podcast. You can follow and support the Tudor's Dynasty podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon at Tudor's Dynasty.